This video is about work transfer. Actually, work transfer is a lot to do with riding a bike. We take what we had for breakfast, or maybe a little something that came out of the wall, transfer that to the pedals, the crank, the chain, the wheels, to get us going down the trail. But transfer of work is also important for the slowing. First, we contract our muscles to move the bones to move our fingers. That contracts to pull the lever arm, which leverages our strength and moves down the cable, ends up at our brake pads here. The slowing part is going to be today's focus. Specifically, we're going to look at the brake cable systems. However, even with hydraulics, it's still a matter of travel versus power. This system is called a short pull or short travel system. Like all lovers, this one is moving on a pivot. The cable is being pulled out here. That distance between the two is important. In this case, it's about 23 millimeters, certainly less than an inch. That radius is what pulls the cable. The smaller this radius, the less cable is being pulled. We can track that by using the ever useful donut here to track how much cable moves. Run the donut over, pull the lever, and there we are, the amount of cable moved. Let's contrast that to this system. This one's considered a long travel or a long pull. Let's start at the lever, from the pivot to the cable fitting, well over an inch. That bigger radius pulls more cable. Set the donut, pull the lever, and there we are. More cable travel, hence the moniker long travel. As with much in life, there are trade-offs. The short pull, although it's pulling less cable, can pull with more force. It has a higher ratio leverage compared to the long pull. That is, where my fingers are pulling, the distance from my fingers to the pivot, divided by that radius. Now, contrast the long pull. Fingers in the same position, we are now dividing by a bigger radius. It's pulling more cable, but with less force. A brake system should have compatible levers and calipers. Let's now consider those calipers here. This one is considered a short pull. That's the distance from the pivot to where the cable attaches. This one is about 62 millimeters. Here is a caliper that is called long travel, 104 millimeters from pivot to cable attachment. Generally, we want our long travel calipers used with a long travel lever. We want our short pull calipers used with the short pull levers. But let's say we're building up that bike, you've got parts laying around, you want to use them, and you love the drop bar, and you like those drop bar levers. Drop bar lever, traditionally, is short pull. The side pull and dual pivots, short pull calipers, short pull lever. But we're gonna mix and match. Is it gonna work? Maybe yes, maybe no, maybe kind of. Let's see what happens when we swap things around. We have our two different systems set up as they should be. But as with all science, we should establish a baseline. So on my wheel here, I have my rims set a certain feel, and I've also set these to be the same. And now to install the highly developed brake pad travel tester, the BPTT. First, let's try this system. The short travel. Now, let's apply it over here to the long travel. You have to say that's the same squeak. Now, to swap. There, we've swapped them. Long travel lever moving over here to the shorter travel arms. And my short pull here running these long arms. Now, let's do the BPTT. Sing it, BBTT. What do we got? Install. Squeeze. That's pretty good. Now, this one. Little buddy, what's going on? This is not a test of power, it's pad movement. These aren't moving very much. These are moving a lot. 
Again, what's that trade-off? Here on this setup, I'm having to pull harder to get that pull to the pads to slow me down. Here, it is an easier pull, but those pads aren't moving much. I'm gonna to have to run them close to my little whale, I mean my rim, in order to get contact. Again, the situation with the short pull lever, the longer pull arm, it kind of works, it can work, but there are some things going on. I get contact here, and then there's that squishiness that feel you're just gonna get. Also, you can have noodle issues. This is called the noodle. It also acts as the arm quick release. Because the pads need to be close to the rim, it makes it more difficult to release the brake at the noodle. The concept of short pole and long pole also applies in the disc brake world. Here, two different calipers, two different levers. Consider the long pole mechanical caliper. From the pivot to where the cable attaches, we have some distance such as this. Compare that to the short pole. Quite a bit difference. The short pole needs the short pole lever. The long pole caliper needs the long pole lever. The short pole lever with its short amount of pole on the cable is not going to provide the articulation of this arm to get the pads on the rotor where they need to be to stop you. The other way is also bad. Using this long travel here, it's going to take a lot of force here to get that stop and power you want. These keep the two separate. To summarize, it's good to be aware of compatibility issues. I wish there were some formulas or ratios I could give you to define short pull and long pull, but that isn't how the industry is working. For example, this brake is titled Shorty. That's a 95 millimeter arm. That's a long shorty. Let's leave it here. If your brakes are stopping you well, be happy, go for a ride. But if they seem squishy, does it really feel like it's stopping you? or it takes a lot of pressure to get you to stop, you may want to look into compatibility issues. Well, that's the long and short of it. Thanks for watching.